Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Earbones Podcast, the only podcast that broadcasts directly from a different universe in the Marvel Multiverse every single week. I am Brand the Ears. I'm Stick the Bones. And I'm Grapes. The Grapes. Uh, and this week we are in Earth 1017. 1017. And I didn't bring, it's from X-Men Millennial Visions 2000. I didn't bring the book. I don't know what it is. You've brought it like 10 weeks in a row. <laughs> and and you forget it. it today. I don't know why I didn't leave it. But it's it's Most Wanted is just the name of it. And then, I, what I don't understand, in this book, it has the full rundown. There's no actual stories. It just is like a, it's an exposition of the universe. And yet, on the Marvel Wiki, somebody never went out of their way to write them in there? Is this something I should I should do? You should. You could be that guy. Would I, do I get, like, points? Yeah, you get internet points. It don't matter. It's like, whose line? I, th- I think it would be more at midnight. At That's midnight true. are like real internet points. <laughs> real internet. <laughs> what do you think about it? I think it's at midnight points. Okay. Confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> Whatever. Um, well, you had an exciting couple days. Yeah. You were dying. I did. You're dead? I did die. Did your heart stop? No, actually. No, I went to the hospital and told me, pretty much, yeah, I can't do anything for you. You're fine. Now, remember the same thing that happened to me? <laughs> Sounds eerily similar. No, I went, I went, I went to Medwell, which is you know, kind of like admit yourself kind of thing. I don't know if people have Medwell. Medwell is like a global thing. Medwell, Med Express. Yeah, kind of like that. Clinics. I'm like, I just need to see a doctor. My chest is tight, hurts a little bit. And like, you need to get over there, honey. I don't know why she'd be really. She was like that though. Well, they're not. I don't think if you have like chest pains like that, I don't know if they're allowed to. They're supposed to, I think, test you, but I don't. I, I think they're just supposed to call an ambulance for you. Well, the guy came. He's like, okay, you're going to need an ambulance because I can't do anything for you here. I'm like, I've been driving around with this for five days. I'll, I'll take myself, you know. He's like, you got to sign a paper. Can you sign a paper? I was like, yeah. I came here on my own free will, I guess. So, opted out of the ambulance. It would have been a fun ride, I guess. An expensive ride. Yeah, so <laughs> that's why I was like, nah, <laughs> nah it's okay. Went to the hospital. How long were you at the hospital? <sighs> I got there about ten, left about one. And they just they, they, did did they run tests? Yeah, yeah. I got a I got a CT scan with the dye and stuff, and looked at my lungs and my heart. And I mean, they know about your you. you do you have Marfan syndrome? I have something that's almost Marfan's. Do they know about it? Yeah. Okay, so you told them about it. Yeah, it that's, that's it why. They're saying my chest hurts. There's <laughs> nothing else wrong. Yeah, that's that's the reason. Scope it out. That's the reason why I went and why they did the test because it's something I got. Well, okay. So what you're saying is, next time I have chest pains, tell them I have Marfan syndrome. Just tell tell me you have chest pains and they'll get you right in. I it was the most pleasant experience I ever had at a hospital. I got in. They didn't do anything. Oh. They told me I had allergies. <laughs> Maybe it was. They said you have hay fever and allergic rhinitis. <laughs> And then I went back two weeks later to actually Med Express, and I demanded, and by demand I mean I asked very politely, for a uh, EKG just to t- just to get, tell me something about my heart. Yeah, hey, you were fine. Uh, he said he, he said he's been working with EKGs for thirty years, and mine looks more normal than anything. <laughs> but I mean, you were dying. You have boring heart. I mean, in addition that you were dying, uh, I, I mean, I had a pretty rough go. I had to have a uh, you know a respiratory physical. You know, that's kind of a big. How'd deal. that go? Um, fucking awful. Uh, first thing is it was it's like a workplace doctor like it's called workplace health so it's not an actual like so he's not a real doctor a, she's a she, I, I don't, I, oh what's she the thing, what's the thing before a doctor P- P- it might, might have been a pa it might, might have been that but it's also they're not they don't really care about you they care about the fact that you're you can work or like what you're there for and don't get me wrong. She was very pleasant. She was very nice. But I just imagined if you were in there with an injury, the way she, the way that she would treat you, because like Ray, she had to do like the actual physical part afterwards, and it was just like, all right, raise your arms behind your head. All right, now turn your head to the right. Turn your head to the left. All right, do a squat. All right, we're good. No cough. No cough. No cough. I, I was ready. I was chubbed up. <laughs> I was fucking ready to go. I, I mean, when she came in, I was laying down, ready to roll. Uh, but no, to do the actual respiratory, and I was yelling at her when it happened. Because I said, yelling. listen, we'll get there. I said, we're at a, such a level in medicine. There has to be a better fucking way to do this. And th- they just get this little machine. And you got to blow all the air out of your lungs. Like, take a deep breath, blow all your air out. And then when all your air is out of your lungs, the bar's only halfway. So you need to continue to blow 
for the another half. And she actually oh. told me, she's like, she's like, get up near the wall. So if you pass out, pass out through the wall, don't fall on me. And I said, oh, this is fucking great. Like, uh, is that a concern? I said, this is Were great. You, was it just you and her? Yes. Oh, my God. And she was not a large lady. Did you have to, like, breathe in the thing where you keep the, the little ball level? No, that's, like, rudimentary compared to this thing. This oh, thing so you're, like, machine. another level. You actually have to pipe, type shit into this thing, and it's a digital bar that goes, and, like, when I'm already at... <laughs> she's like, are right, you halfway. <laughs> she's ever, like, hard mode. And I almost passed out three times. I didn't. Uh, as soon as I was done, she said, you did so much better than the guys that were in here earlier. They had, they had long ages of 103. I said... What? She's like, you did so much better than Michael. I, I bet you tell that to all the blowers. <laughs> <laughs> so see, you had, you know, some problems. I had some problems. But I had to go back there Friday morning because there's one piece on the sheet that they never, they never get right. I was even told before I go there. They say, hey, they always get something wrong. So when I went there, I said, I'm already told you guys are going to do something wrong. And then it was when they did my eye exam, they just did it with correction, like with my glasses on, and they didn't write anything for without correction. So I had to go back just to do that little fucking chart with my glasses off. Which, by the way, glasses off vision is like 2090. You see better with your glasses off? Okay, I didn't... I one, wondered, one eye sees good? If this goes, no, I wonder if this goes on. Do you know how the, the, the eye chart, how that works, the 2020? Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Yeah, it's, it, no. it's how you can read something from 20 feet away. 20 feet away, yes. And if, I, if my eye is 2090, it means I see at 20 feet what somebody else sees at 90, what somebody with perfect vision sees at 90 feet. That's how good I could see it. I mean, not at all. I was going to say, you made, it sound, you made it sound really good. Like you hyped it up. I'm like, that doesn't no, sound right. Opposite. None of that sounds right opposite. at all. Opposite. I thought about that. That's fucking terrifying. And I even looked it up because, you know, this is how my brain works. I said, what's legally blind? And it's like 2250. Which I feel like you hit the 100 mark. You should probably ease back. You should probably ease back on what you're doing visually. <laughs> I'm probably I'm probably there. I have I don't know how the numbers like your contacts work, but I'm negative 11. My glasses are like three of your lenses stacked on top of one another, thick, and it's the thinnest material they can make. How do you close your eyes? <laughs> Obviously, so I don't wear my glasses. Oh yeah, no, I my my eyelashes brush off of them. I I can't see anything with my I lose a contact. So. Isn't that scary? Yes, it is horrifying, especially like on the road. Because then I'll just be in a hotel room and like I can't do anything, right? So then I'm just blind for, for a bit. I thought my life You should sucked. probably like stock up on contacts. Yeah. Well, I do. I, I mean, I do. I Don't be like glasses, this guy. But it's kind of embarrassing. These thick glasses. Oh, glasses are embarrassing? No. My glasses are embarrassing. I get called four eyes every day. Still? Still. Uh, and they told me to be over after high school. By the way, speaking of... Uh, the weird jokes and things that I said that I've never said uh, segue into <laughs> I go to the gym on Thursday Wednesday I don't know what day it was it wasn't Wednesday it might have been Wednesday I go to the gym and WJAC TV the local news is outside like truck is in the parking lot I'm like what the fuck's going on I just see the camera guy right at the front door like just panning around on the doors and I said something that I've never said I don't know if I'll ever say it again but I was so excited can you can you, can you guess what I said <laughs> I don't know what did I say to this cameraman filming the, the front of the building? Do you have a guess? I have no, no guesses. I feel like it's a little dirty, though. Not dirty at all. It's not dirty at all. Not my head was in the wrong spot. <laughs> you, got, you got anything? Uh, Same the real views outside? No. Are you, you ready? You're flexing? Are you ready? Yeah. Walked by. Looked up at me because I was, like, making noises, like, shuffling and, like, jingling around to try to get his attention when I walked by. I said, getting some B-roll, huh? <laughs> And his response was, yeah, he's getting some B-roll. <laughs> wow. At least he's you, in on did it. Did you get in on the B-roll then? No, I was never more excited and proud of saying something and then ashamed at the same time. <laughs> you, just, you just made him realize how awful. Because I was kind of being a dick, but it came off worse than I wanted it to. He's like, oh, this is all I'm ever going to do. <laughs> B-roll for a local news station. But they were doing a news story about like people stealing stuff from the locker rooms, which I've never had a problem with. There's a whole story on it. Yeah, it was in the news. It wasn't just about my gym, though. It was about, like, all the local gyms. Because, like, I guess Planet Fitness, people have been breaking windows and stealing stuff out of cars while people are in there. 
You, no, you nothing, fix that with cameras. Nothing's ever got stolen out of my place or out of my bag or anything at the gym. I mean, you just literally had a whole car stolen. We, we had a problem in high school. Uh, I left my iPod whenever it was like the iPod 1 still on the bench, and then I went down to our local thrift shop. And I was like, hey, that's my iPod. I noticed a scratch on it. And then he's like, well, you got to buy it off of me. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not buying it off of you. And then I, I uh, wrote down all the songs in my and the names of my playlist. I said, I guarantee if you turn this on, there's a playlist with this title, and then all these songs are in it. And after about the third one, he's like, don't call the cops, and I'll give it to you. And I, I didn't call the cops. And did he give it to you? He did give it to me, yep. And then he told me he sold it to him. And it was, uh, it, was it doesn't matter. Name it, name it. Carl Baker. <laughs> yep. That is hilarious. Yep. Didn't you, but also, didn't your, like, wedding ring get stolen out of a high school locker room? Yes, yes. This is my second wedding ring. Uh, my first one was... Uh, was stolen it was they have motion sensor cameras so like the camera picked up the guy walking by it and then he looked down at the ring and then the camera went black and then the next screen was somebody else walking by with the guy sitting there and no ring so they said <laughs> we can't prove he stole it but it kind of you know if you could fill in the blanks that's what happened but like you can come clean out like you lost it right i would i would tell you if i lost it no just you lost it I would probably feel better if I lost it, other than it, it getting stolen, because now I kind of feel, you know, like, uh, irresponsible. Oh, it didn't mean anything. It was your first wife. Yeah, no one cares. Yeah, but, like, you, you lost it. Right? I mean, technically, te I don't have it anymore, so I, I lost it, and I don't know where it is now. <laughs> now, when you see a guy on the street wearing it, you're going to say, hey, I know, what's, I know what's written inside that ring. Let me write it down, and then my playlist. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I, Okay. What do you do with a, a a wedding band? Like like where do you take that? I think you can scrap, scrap it. Yeah, no, no. This is very light. Um, you could take it probably to you know some other kind of Gary's place. Or thr another guy. Yeah. You might get thirty bucks for. Are oh, we taking it to Macklemore? Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. We did bring that up twice now. Maybe. maybe. We doing a cover at the end. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh. Um, I guess we can talk about something. <laughs> Please. Um. Wow. Nice drinking sound effects. I hope I, they, I do. I do fully. I work. hope they got. I do up. fully work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's that? What's that guy's name? Who was in uh, Please Get Me? What was his name? Oh, uh, really good. Michael something. My, Michael. Michael. Michael Bolton. Bolton. Definitely. No. Yeah. It was, no, it was Michael Bolton, guys. While you're looking up, you could teach your uh, fans what what cheese curds are. They don't know. <laughs> teach you oh, what oh, cheese curds are. <laughs> Cheese turds, so... <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. All right, I got it. I got it. So uh, everybody else had horrible weeks. My week wasn't as bad. I was in Wisconsin. I ate bratwurst and cheese every day, and it was awesome. Cheese turds is a Wisconsin thing, and uh, it's before they, like, push it all together to make a block of cheese. <laughs> I like the idea that you're just assuming nobody knows what a cheese curd is. Did you not know what a cheese curd was before you went? Because, like, I, I've heard of cheese curds, and, like, I know they exist. I know of them in poutine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I told him to get some while he's up there. And he asked someone. It was, it, poutine is definitely a Canadian dish. Well, I figured Wisconsin's close enough. But if they have cheese curds, you figure they have Yeah. Curds. It's just but fucking you gravy. Knew what, you knew what cheese curds were, right? Yeah. You're under the assumption that the general public doesn't know what a cheese curd is. Absolutely. All right, sorry. I'm sorry to break up your, your public service announcement then. Here. No, I mean, that, that, was, that was pretty much it. That was it. Cheese, cheese turds are just cheese before it gets smushed together. And all the good stuff comes out of it. The good juicy mm. stuff that makes your... Did you have fried cheese curds? I had all kinds, yeah. Did you have baked cheese curds? Jalapeno. I had some baked, some fried, deep fried, you know. Mm. Uh, just regular is the best, though, by far. It's fresh. Fresh right out the cow. Cheese, though. Oh, all different kinds. I don't know. There was the, My favorite was... Uh, I think it was it was either mozzarella or cheddar with like jalapeno mixed in. It was so good. That sounds lovely. All right, let me ask you this. Okay. Do you think Brian, the original, knows what a cheese curd is? You're not Brian. No, Brian. Brian, Brian definitely knows what a cheese curd is. He eats them on the norm. I'm sure you can. Probably Giant Eagle. You, no, you can. Yeah, definitely Giant Eagle. You can probably buy cheese curds like if you go to a. a, a nope. Huh? Farm. You could not be happy with that. Sentence. No, I'm not. I'm not. You can buy cheese curds. You go to a milk farm. Go to milk farm. Oh, okay. I was like, I, was like I, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Shout out, shout out to Grape for, for actually 
being a human being <laughs> with a mic. Wow. Yep. Wow. I don't want to talk about all these. What if I told you we we didn't have to? Oh, we're not going to. Um, oh, don't we have to do um pencil and some picks this week? Yeah. You probably get grapes in on it. I'm sure you might be on it. I'm a horrible drawer, but... Nope. Can... Nope. <laughs> Whoa, over the head. Missed it. Pencil in some Dropped picks. it. <laughs> Dropped it. Did you say you went extremely picks? literal with that. So literal it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What kind of picks? Well, just don't tell him now. Just let him just keep guessing. He's going to bug him all show. All right. Okay. Uh, what book do you want to talk about? I know you read some of these. What book do you want to talk about? Wonder Woman. Let's talk about Wonder Woman. Oh, my foot's asleep. Wonder Woman number 22. I don't know if that's seen or not. Oh, hold on. Yeah, you could. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. What happened? What's going on? What happened? Did you... Did the cord come... Oh, I see what you did there. I like that. I'm not going to move that so you can see if it's seen. <laughs> Wonder <but> Woman 22. <laughs> um, these stories are together now, right? I think they, I think they converged. That weird issue you said they went together? Yes. So... But the finale of them are in separate issues. <laughs> like, God, what, what was this one? Was this God Watch? This is or, God Watch. Okay, the God Watch finale is in a month. And the Truth finale is next week. Or, well, yeah, it would be next week now. But two weeks from when this Maybe they're not together. Maybe we just... Maybe they, like... like They seem very similar? Went right across each other at one point. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Were they... I don't know. But, uh... Who pops up in this? Magog? Magog. Is Magog in this or is that a different book I read? I think it's a different book. I don't think Magog was in this. <laughs> Magog's in a book I read this week. Probably action. It might have been. If I could think of anything. It might have been Supergirl. Oh. No, it's definitely Supergirl. Really? Yeah, we'll talk about that really quick while this is happening. Um, yeah, in Supergirl 9, Magog shows up and Batgirl and Supergirl have a team up to, to beat his ass. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's all I need to How does that Batgirl one. go against Magog? Isn't he like almost like a <laughs> dark side? Uh, that's the thing. He, I, he disappears into like a dimensional portal, and then she jumps in after him, and then Kara, Kara jumps in after her. Hmm. She doesn't give a fuck. She doesn't. Okay, but now back to Wonder oh, Woman, yeah. I guess. Okay. Um, what did you think about this one? Uh, it was great. Okay. <laughs> Good, Good cover. cover! Okay, now what did you think about it? Uh, I, really, I really liked it. I liked... It was weird. I didn't understand what was going on at first. They were auctioning off um. I mean, I guess I could dates. look at it as we were talking about it if you wanted to. Okay. Dates with with uh, Wonder Woman, and Bruce and Lex were in a bidding war for her. And the and the what? scientist, the doctor. Yeah, lady? The, the doctor lady's been trying to get her for a while, right? Yes. To oh, in order to get uh, like technology from the the, the 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 energy signature of the lasso. Uh, the lasso. So yeah, she, that's what it was about, right? She dropped a cool fifteen mil on her. It's just fifteen mil, no fucking biggie, you know? We just right. Yeah, those, those are your contacts. That's how you fucking clean them off. <laughs> Probably need a chisel for those things. Um, Wonder Woman had a really weird dress in this. I don't understand what's going on. It was the most see-through thing we've ever seen, but it wasn't. I don't know. I don't recall the dress. Uh, I, it's weird that it, that stuck out to me. I don't know. Uh, the art in it was really good. I'm sorry, the dress got me thinking about the art. Then we end up going, she it's has her he's, help. Sorry, he's getting worried about this book. She she has she has them help bring down criminals so she can get the energy of the lasso and one woman kind of knows she's up to something shows up at her office window that seems to open I don't think high rise buildings windows open if you own the building I think you can make them open <laughs> you don't think fucking Warren Buffett doesn't have his fucking windows open in his office I doubt it man let's be honest I think there's some structural integrity that goes behind those that have to be closed nah he opens them up. He says, come on, let's get him open. I'll pay the fines. By the way, Warren Buffett sounds like that. If you didn't, that was a perfect Warren Buffett. That is a good Warren Buffett. That's what I figured. You really let me flounder on that book, and I, I hate everything about you right now. I did not. <laughs> yeah. That's like one of the first books I read, so I wasn't super familiar with it. I, I, I hit you with that lasso information. You did. You threw the lasso at me, then you, you left me hanging. I don't remember what else happened. You tied me up and left me on the, the bed. The dogs were there, but they didn't even acknowledge that they were the you gods. left me on the bed with peanut butter. It got weird. And your parents come home. Every time I think about like being... 
forced on a bed, I think a dark tower. You never read it. No, I don't. You... I'm not good at drawing. When's that movie? <laughs> when's that movie coming out? Uh, August. Wonder Woman's in like two weeks. It's next week. I almost bought a Wonder second. Woman's jacket today. Like you know those old like silver starter jackets. Like the the, the like the. the, the... There's a name Where are you board. going? Like the var they're not varsity jackets, but they're like thinner versions of varsity jackets. You mean like cheerleader jackets? Like like swishy material. Windbreakers. They're not windbreakers. You break they're thicker than a windbreaker, but not as thick as a varsity jacket. When you jog, do you wear a windbreaker? No. You should. Get that what? resistance down. I wear a parachute. That that won't help. Yes. You just... That'll slow you down. Yeah, you work up those leg muscles. Then when you take it off, it's like the chains are off. What if you, never, <laughs> what if you never take it off? No, I mean, that's when you train, you wear that. Oh. What are you training for, champ? Jogging. <laughs> I thought that was the fucking question. I, just, I thought it was maybe like a triathlon or a quadathlon or a quadathlon. Is that a real thing? What's the fourth event? <laughs> Hold on, real quick. What are the three events in a triathlon? I got this. It, it's running, swimming, and there's another running. No. Yeah, because that sounds like three different events. No, but one's one's like cross country. One's like sprinting. No, that nope. <laughs> Nope. This is interesting. Nope. One, is interesting. one is definitely swimming. Can we come to conclusion? Yes. It is swimming is confirmed. Swimming. swimming is confirmed. Okay. And a, a, at least one of the other ones, you're running. Is there a baton involved? <laughs> like, a, like a relay? No, like a marionette. I don't know. Or majorette. Marionettes? <laughs> no. No? Okay. There's no baton. Okay. So, so you're swimming. Do you start swimming? Mountain biking. Biking. No. Down, something downhill. <laughs> Luge. It's Running, biking. swimming, biking. and luge. It's biking. Yes, now what's the fourth one you're adding since you said quadathlon? I mean, when, what, when you jump over to things. Hurdling. Hurdling. That's still running. <sighs> but aren't you know what? Nobody ski wants shooting. ski shoot. No. What is this? Cross country skiing? What is this? Cross country moonshining? No. We don't need a bunch of hillbillies shooting guns when they're out of breath and passing out. Or yeah. ski shooting first. Which, which one do you do first? Do you swim first because you might die swimming, or do you ski shoot first because you might kill somebody else? Is it like um, is the water that deep? Is it like the I, I can't remember what the name of the event is, but where they actually they it's like the cross country skiing and then they shoot in the Olympics. Yeah, that's what so I was. So are they are they carrying the gun with them the whole the whole time? No, after the ski shoot they let it. After the ski shoot they they, they leave it there. Do those guns shoot real bullets? I'm, I almost fucking put this in you. I thought asshole. they shot BBs. I mean, come on. You can shoot someone with a BB and they'll be okay. You guys, let's put some money on this because I don't know. You don't know? You think, you think real bullets. No. You, you think BBs. You think real bullets. If I say pellets, am I right in the middle? I mean, <laughs> I'll give it can to I, you. Can I say pellets? You say pellets. If I look over my glasses at you like this, you almost have to agree with whatever. I, I, I do. They're just shooting big wooden. Okay, what's the name of the event? Cross-country ski shoot? There's no way it's cross-country ski shoot. <laughs> That's like a fun. Ski shoot. Ski shooting. No, it's, it's cross... It's, just search cross-country with guns. No. No. <laughs> Skiing with guns. Skiing with guns. I actually had a, a distant uh, cousin that was in the Olympics for this event. That is the most... It's the biathlon. Biathlon. I was going to say that, but I figured I'd get made yeah. fun of because there's no luge. Where are they? Ski, poles, and rifles. Oh, wow, here. Um, we'll do a little history lesson on the biathlon. Oh, here we go. Uh, its presence started in 1924, but only by the military patrol it was allowed to do it in the Olympics. And then in 1960, it became official. Um, it combines cross-country skiing and rifle shooting. Here we go. Rolls and equipment. Here we go. Yes. Basic concepts. Don't give a fuck. Skiing details. Don't care. Shooting details. A small bore rifle, which weighs at least 3.5 kilograms, 7.7 pounds. Excluding ammunition and magazines. The rifle, the rifle uses 22 LR ammunition and our bolt action or straight pull bolt action. Oh, my God. That means bullets. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> or just really big BBs? Can I shoot you with a 22 and see if it No. Nope. No, you're good. I understand that. That's how I kill my dinner. I go hunting with, with 20, 22 magnums. No? Keep your condom talk out of it. Oh, <laughs> for my monster dong. Um, you didn't read action, right? 
No. Um, what happened, champ? Okay, uh, Eradicator. I'm calling you champ a lot. I don't, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't like Mogul it. doesn't want to bow down to Eradicator. Who? And he sense. says, you know, like, no, I'm the leader. I'll take care of this. And they said, no, we're, we're, we're getting this uh, stone for our leader. And they go back, and it is, uh, it's just some guy. You remember some guy popped up in the last one? Yeah. I, said, I don't know who this guy was. Yeah. And I guess this stone that they got, when you put the two halves together, it allows you to change one thing about your body one time. Like one major thing about your body or life. Oh, I know what I'd change. Oh, bigger arms. Yeah. Well, you can't get much bigger. It'd just be uncomfortable. But Well, he, uh, he, 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 he like activates it and then starts tearing his skin away, and it is Cyborg Superman. Because I guess he was changed back into a human. A human. So now he was. Hey, I want to be a cyborg. Oh no, he was. Uh, and then Cyborg Superman beats the fuck out of Mogul, telling him that like I am your master. You must kiss my hand. It's like you you once worshipped. Kiss me. his hand. He makes him kiss his hand in this. He oh, bows down does he get all dainty with it? Nice. Yes. That is. Whoa. And then they say there's one more person they need to get for uh for this ultimate revenge squad, and it's Zod. I was gonna say it's Zod. And they're it? going to get Zod. I like the way the story's going. It's just I love Eradicator and his sunglasses. <laughs> Uh, Rock Candy Mountain, number two, which I like this book, but no real. Before you, before, you, before you leave that one, is that based off, there's an old folk song called Rock Candy Mountain. Is it based off of that? 100%. Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. 100%. It's about the old folk song. And are you familiar with the folk song, apparently? Where it, the Rock Candy Mountain. <laughs> I mean, he pulled it. He should know. <laughs> Rock Candy Mountain means the utopia for hobos, for the hobos. Like, they're traveling. That's, that's, their, that's where they want to get. And they're one of the guys is trying to get to Rock Candy Mountain, and there's like a reporter who's like traveling, trying to figure out, you know, this guy really thinks this place is real. And they're like, well, it is real. And the, the, the homeless guy says he has a map for it. Okay. But like he opens this book, and it's always just an arrow telling him where to go. Like it's not really a map, it's just like telling him where to go. But there's a lot of hobo fights and a lot of interesting things happening. That sounds awesome. He's really excited. I mean, I'll let you read if you want. Um, Old Man Logan, number 23. Regression number one. A lot of vomit in this. Uh, yeah, this is a very uh, grotesque book. A lot of blood, a lot of vomit, a lot of dismemberment, bugs. a lot of bugs. Gross book. Creepy crawlies. Interesting book. Uh, definitely of like the mental. He's having hallucinations. He's seeing things. People are dying. He's. I really like it. When I first got on it, the main thing that drew me was that it has this like this dead and gross and creepy feeling, but without being zombies, which I really don't want or want to see anymore. I thought it was a part of Rot World. It's well, not Rot World. This is Rot World Part 2. <laughs> it's tie-in. Rot World Part 2. It's, they, went out, they had to get a new fucking publisher. Um, Deadpool number 30, the $10 book. Fill the, fill the heft on that thing. Wow. Yeah, that's... that's Cost $10. How do you feel about that? I mean, it's Deadpool, though. I, I like Deadpool. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, I hear from the... Wolf's mouth, cow's mouth, dog. Right, right from the uh, someone's right mouth. from the cheese curd's mouth. Cheese curd. Uh, <laughs> you're the cheese curd. You're the cheese curd. Grapes, the, grapes the curd. Nope. No. Nope. Grape curd. Grape curd. That sounds disgusting. People are getting sick from. Oh, they're already sick from looking at these socks. They are sick. They are. I'm a little jealous. Okay. Um, I had a dream that this was good. <laughs> Like, in my dream, I woke up and, like, thought, like, oh, I read that, yeah. And then I was still sitting on my table, like, in the non-red pile. Yeah? But I had a dream that I told you this was good. <laughs> so it wasn't good. I know, I, I, I read it since that dream. And you know what I realized about these big books? It still a little bothers me that they're $10. It still bothers me a bit that I don't think I would necessarily... I, I probably wouldn't buy this book if it came out not in the sequence of the, of the title. Yes. Uh, but... We're afforded a lot of things when these longer books happen. And I think if you read it, you would see this as well, where in a lot of these other books, a lot of them, they're trying to compress the story into 32 pages normally. Which yeah. Is like, and that's with ads. Uh, but in this one, we have so much space that you can have a scene happening behind it. You can have the art tell a separate story than what the, what the dialogue is saying. And it affords us more room to imagine and to see things around it. And it... It, it, it affords us time to watch stories develop and things develop more than these other ones that rushes through it. Well, I, I can see that, but usually some, most of the time with these $10 books, it's broken up in like five this or is six one story. story. See, now that's different. Yeah, one story. That's pretty cool. Scott Adsit starts off seemingly, seemingly like he's going to commit suicide. You remember Agent Scott Adsit? Yeah. 
And he says, this is my last time on Earth. And he's, like, throwing his ID in the river and stuff. And he goes to throw his gun, and he says, no, 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 no. And he puts it in his thing, and he says, this beautiful world doesn't deserve that. And there's, like, an old lady throwing a gun off the bridge, and, like, an old guy throwing a gun off the bridge. Uh, and he's like, hey! And they're like, what? <laughs> but then uh, later, Deadpool's going to space to find a weapon to kill Madcap, because nothing can kill Madcap. He can't find anything. So he says, if nothing on Earth will kill him, I'll go find a weapon. <laughs> So he goes, he ends up getting in, he, he goes and opens the Watcher's mausoleum, like, op goes into it, and finds, like, the Watcher's TV, and turns on, he goes, look at this disaster porn! <laughs> and then he sees a war happening, and he's like, that's where the weapons are, I gotta be there! So then he goes to the war, ends up getting caught by the Nova Corps, he's the only one left, there was an Ultron virus on this world, which is just turning people into half Hank Pym, half Ultron, and they're all killing each other. Oh my god. And he's the only survivor. Like, everybody else gets wiped out, and he's the only survivor. The Nova Corps takes him back to, like, the Nova Corps planet, and Scott Adsit is the new, like, general of the Nova Corps. Like, that's where he got offered a job. Really? And Scott Adsit's like, no, I left Earth to get away from you. I don't want to just be a gun that dies in one of your stories. He's like, I, no, you can't be here. And Scott Adsit goes through, like, his existential thing where he's like, I just want to live my life. I want to love a lady with green skin. I want to do all this. I get that. And Deadpool's like, oh, you watch out for those non-human ladies. <laughs> Uh, continue on to, there's a whole Abbott and Costello bit where Deadpool's trying to find out where to get the best weapons. Oh, that's wonderful. And the guy's saying, nowhere. <laughs> K-N-O-W-H-E-R-E. And he's like, yeah, but where do I get him? He's like, nowhere. He's like, oh, I get it. Here's a little thing. Here's a little something for your trouble. Now, where do I go? He goes, nowhere. And he's like, yeah, but you know, <laughs> where do I get him? <laughs> that's them? great. And it, it's a whole two-page spread. I would enjoy that. And during that two-page spread, there's something in the background, like, uh, things are, like, dropping down and something, something's coming up to eat somebody. Like, it's a whole other outside bit. Um, eventually he gets to nowhere, and then the, and somebody tries to kill him, the collector shows up, I don't know, he just starts killing people. Uh, he gets a 3D printer to print out the ultimate nullifier, <laughs> just to, so he tells people he has it, so they'll all come, and then he ends up fighting Sif, he fights all these people. Uh, by the way, Deadpool kills a lot of people in this. Oh yeah? Like, he sends some random Valhalla, one random Asgardian to Valhalla, and like, everybody in Valhalla is laughing at him for getting killed by Deadpool. They're like, they let anybody in Valhalla nowadays. <laughs> But eventually, he finds uh, some weapon, or no, he, the collector says he wants Madcap after he won't take Deadpool. So he gave him a thing to call him when he gets there, Deadpool goes to hunt Madcap down, and I don't remember what happened at the end of this. It was so long. It was really good, though. That's good. It was good. I, $10 good? I feel like I could, you, you can buy an image trade for 10 bucks. Yeah. Which is six issues. Yeah. Probably about the same size, though, if I'm being honest. Yeah, maybe. It's well written. I like the Deadpool series, but ten bucks is a little much. You make this eight bucks, and I think I'd be all right with it. Yeah, eight bucks. Ten bucks is right, that's more to wheelhouse. The nice eight dollar. Ten bucks is a decent amount. New, new Superman number eleven. Open that up. Look at the reveal at the end. Uh, by the way, he's finding some new chakras. He gets super speed and races the new Justice League China's Flash, and she stomps him because obviously she is you know a Flash. What the fuck is Superman Zero? Superman Zero. Is that him? Yeah, he says he's back. Now, the only thing I can gather from this is that he is the Superman who was possibly the first Chinese Superman. Maybe, I mean... But I've, I, I don't remember him, and I've been on this book since it started. Yeah, I don't, I, I've never seen that in my life. Good, more Superman. That's what we need. That's all we need. Uh, this book is still really good. I still like how he's his own Superman, where he has to develop all his different chakras to have his... Uh, chakras is not the word they use either, but it's the word I'm going to use. To develop his powers and everything. Uh, I'm a fan of it. Uh, Detective, number two, 956. And you said you read this. I did read this. What happened, though? Uh, we found out that Orphan didn't kill any of those people. She just knocked them all out. Yeah, because she's badass like that. Because she said she's better than death. That was a statement I think she made. Orphan was amazing in this. This whole arc, I, I, I think she certainly got some great character development. Instead of being a weird mute girl that didn't talk. Yeah, definitely. We, we learn more about her. We learn about her, I mean, her, her parents' issues. Ra's al Ghul kills her mother. Yeah. And she basically says that she's going to get Ra's al Ghul. Yeah, and um, her mother whispers something to her at the, before she dies. Yeah, there. we don't know what it is. So, though. Um, that's something to look forward to, I guess. It was good. It was good. Uh, America number three, the first book I read this week because it was not an Archie week. Um, you would have loved this issue. I like the cover. America gets, uh, and I'm going to open it up to show you it because it is fantastic. By the way, great cover. Just to show it for a second. Mm -hmm. 
If I, if I don't hum, it's weird. It's weird. I think it was more weird you hummed. Hey, I'm going to ask you real nice ones. Yeah? Fuck off. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, buddy. What the hell's in the back of this? I don't know. Okay, well, I, I forget how they meet. Oh, my cover's ripped. I gotta get a new one. Um, I forget what happens exactly. Yeah, it's Jesus. But America and Storm, like, America. oh, she just she just ends up, like, she goes through a portal, like, one of her portals, and she ends up fighting Juggernaut. Who? Oh. And then not just Juggernaut, the entire, like, old X-Men team. Yeah. But as she's fighting them, like, she encounters Storm, Mohawk Storm, oh, badass Storm. Yeah. And Storm says, I know who you are, I know why you're here, like, you, you know, the, the, the gods have spoken of you or something like that. And then they have this whole moment where Storm teaches her about like her powers and about how to better find herself and better be a you know a better hero and to not rely on just pure aggression and power and they and then they actually fight each other which is amazing I say how is that even fair and then at the end you know they they give a nice hug and it's it's actually a gorgeous scene when like she's teaching her how to be this hero teaching her how to better use her powers teaching her how to you know be more well-rounded overall and then when she goes back to the people who have kidnapped her, her girl, her ex-girlfriend, if you recall, yeah, all those little pixie things that she punched her back, attacking their home, and then their like leader pops out of nowhere. Oh. Don't know what that thing is. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, but her fraternity pops in in a spaceship to say to help out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this fucking book is great. I love. I feel this like she book. didn't need help if she went one on one with Storm. I mean, this book is great. It looks great. I don't know why I'm not on it. You should be. Yeah. Well, I could have got could have got on that, but I had to pay ten dollars for a Deadpool book. Well, you read Shade? I did. Shade number eight. Oh, she, she's out in the town. God. She's out in the town. She's out. She's out in the town of Gotham doing weird shit. By the way, I'm pretty sure I finally understand what's going on with these like secondary thought bubbles. What secondary thought bubbles? Like. You have the bubbles of her speech, then you have the bubbles of, like, her thoughts, and then you have the bubbles which are other shades' poetry. Oh, that makes sense. I didn't think of that. Yeah. I fucking get it. Like, finally, I get it. Oh, God. What happened in this book? She goes to Gotham. Sees Gotham differently than everybody. Yeah. Just being a straight tourist, but it's, it's so refreshing to see that. Yeah. And this is, the first, is this the first time that we realize that she's actually in the DCU? <laughs> Yeah, pretty Mother, much. Cause... Mother Panic's been there for a while, but I don't think I've seen Doom Patrol or Cave Carson. Well, no, Cave Carson is because Superman was in it. Yeah. But it's the first time I see the crossover. Yeah, this actually shade. put it put it in DC Universe. Um, and she starts leaving Earth to see... You okay, guys, over there? I like the eye contact the whole time. That's really... I don't let up eye contact. I'm not... We're not doing this. Um... She starts going out in space and sees her ex-boyfriend. But is she in space or is it more of like an astral projection? I don't know. What that was a bit confusing. I don't know what's going on. Or I, guess, I would go with astral projection. By the way, what's the other shade's name? What's her shade's name? Who's Loma? She's Loma. She's Loma. What's the other shade's name? Uh, oh. Roma? No, it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme. Good. Just keep talking about the book. I'll look it up. Um, and she sees her ex-boyfriend, and she's like, "Oh, hi!" And then he like freaks out and says, "They're coming for you." And the book kind of ends, I think. I don't think it's Richard Swift, huh? Spark. I want to say spark. Spark. Spark shade. Spare. Spare shade. Spare shade. Spare shade. Spawn shade. Spawn shade. Oh, God, that's not what I'm trying to type in at all. Did you see that? <laughs> MMM? MNM? MNM. I'm not getting any answers. None. What's going on? Rack. Rack. Rack shade. Well, I was close. I wasn't. No, no I wasn't. Uh, but th this book, it, it was a little confusing at the end. It was a little confusing uh, with the astral projection in space. And maybe he's going crazy so we didn't know if he saw her or not. Was there a big like reveal at the end of this? Not really, I don't think. Other than they're coming for her, I think. Oh, 
amazing scene with her in the zoo. I did like the zoo scene. And her in the museum. With the museum, it was amazing. When she's talking to, like, the bones of the birds. Yeah. Because she is technically an avian. Yeah. Superwoman number 10, which was the decider. If I was going to keep this or go, uh, this book was great. Oh. Number 10 was fantastic. I don't understand how it was so good. Lana goes back, and uh, we see a lot of history of Steele's daughter. Oh, God, no, not Steele's daughter. Steele's niece. Steele's niece. Steele's niece and nephew, who apparently is gone somehow, or he's a criminal. I don't really know what happened. Uh, but Criminal! Do you recall when Superwoman was Superwoman and uh, Steele's niece made her that insect queen armor? Mm-hmm. No, but sure. Made her insect queen armor, and uh, she had now she's no longer Superwoman. Like she doesn't have the Superwoman powers. Uh, they got they got wiped away from her from that one virus. Yeah, or whatever happened. I remember that. Well, she puts the insect queen armor on, and it still reacts. Like they put her in this training room, and it still like reacts and protects her. And then I guess the theory is that the insect queen armor was so much a part of her that even though she lost the powers, it retained them. So now when she wears the suit, she has the Superwoman so this armor. Is, this is just like a cop-out to give her powers again. I don't know if it's quite the Superwoman armor because she even says that she's human. So I think there is still the ability there that she can die. I think the suit is just, as, this, as long as the suit's functioning, she might be okay. Hmm. We'll see as, how it gets written as we go on. But she ends up fighting uh, some badass. But by the way, there was also, a, it might be this. There was a book where... Mad God. No. Oh, it was uh, the new Superman. They injected the Doomsday virus into an old Chinese, like, turtle. Oh, yeah? It was fucking wild. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's, oh, this guy, who is, um, his name is Skyhook, who is the accomplice, or maybe Steel's brother? Steel's brother? I have no idea. I've never I, heard of I, I can't remember. But she has this g- gorgeous speech at the end where she says, um, uh, how, how does it start? Um, uh, love makes us do stupid things. Uh, like, confront our nephew's kidnapper, Skyhook. There you go. Without much there of a plan. Go. I didn't think ahead. I just let the emotions drive. I'm totally vulnerable. And even with his hands wrapped around my throat, I let the emotions win because they're the ones that showed up to fight. Love, hope, not my anxiety or my fear or insecurity. Clark fights with his humanity. That's how he wins. And that's how I decide to fight. I am human and I am Superwoman. So she is... So she is human. But I think that there's power that protects her. Like, I think she can still be injured. I don't think she's invulnerable. But I think she still has powers. Yeah. Which makes sense. I could see that. We'll see going forward. Yeah. I don't know. I'll let you know. But this book was gone if it, this one didn't deliver, and this was fucking great. Wow, there you go. Loved it. Can we um, get, like, a you, chopping block and, and do it like they do in Chop for books you, now? You didn't read either of these? No. Uh, Uncanny Avengers 23. Basically, what I got out of this is that Simon Williams is back. Wonder Man is back. And uh, you can if you want. And uh, for some reason, Rogue still has her same powers. She can still fly and... All the stuff. Hmm. Maybe they'll go away eventually. I don't know. She's still ugly? No, she wasn't. Hmm. But this book had the feel as if it was ending. Like, it... Hold this for a second. Hi, Grapes. My thought on uh, Superwoman yeah? is uh, maybe she is invulnerable, but her human side is that she has the human emotional connection that some, you know... Clark does, too, though. Super- well, Superman does, too. Right. But maybe that's just her saying that that's my humanity side is that I have the that's her thing. love and, and compassion and all that stuff. And maybe she didn't. So she's it, human. She can take on. She you know that's how you come a better place. She can get drugged down and damaged emotionally, but maybe physically, since she's superwoman, she can't physically get hurt. Yeah, kind of like me. Right. Well, the opposite. Right. You're just an emotional train wreck. Ha! I'm an emotional train wreck. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't that have a look like it'd be the last page of a book? The, la- the ending of a title? Never the end. And she's like looking at the team and missing it because they all go their different ways. Y'all ain't going anywhere without me, sugar. And, it, and if you go to the next page, it looks like this. Is, but like everybody goes a separate way, but then you look at the next page and like I guess that's the new team? I just don't think Deadpool's on it, maybe? Oh, uh, well, yeah. No, it yeah, definitely. Maybe they already did the Secret Empire tie-ins and they just turned them <laughs> out. I really like this picture, though. Yes. But uh, in this, we find out that Synapse mm-hmm. is actually, uh, you know, well, first off, Strife pops up in this. You heard me, right? Strife. Yeah, I thought, pops up I thought he was 
doing something. Yeah, he popped up, and then Synapse realizes, okay, let me walk you through this, because I know you love shit like this. Oh, God. Whenever Cable was attacked by Red Skull, he yeah. put his consciousness into his arm. So Red Skull couldn't steal his mind, secrets, and energy like that. So then she had to go into the arm and bring his consciousness out to put it back into his head. And that's when she saw that she was the future baddie that like tried to destroy the world. Okay. And then her and the Cable's like, yeah, I joined this team not for Deadpool. She's like, I thought you joined this team just because you hate Deadpool or because you're in Deadpool or buddy. He's like, I hate Deadpool. He's like, I became a time traveler to avoid Deadpool. And then, she's like, and then he's like, you and me are a lot alike. I'm, I'm here to check on you. That's sad. He's like, you don't have to be who you are because I'm not going to turn into who I am. Are you okay with that? With what? Cable hating Deadpool. I don't know if he used the word hate. He said, I became a time traveler to avoid Deadpool. <laughs> I thought they were just good buddies. I mean, I never thought they were buddies, but they definitely, like, Cable definitely has a soft spot for him. But he just definitely finds him as annoying as fuck. Hmm. What do you think? You sad that the bromance is not really a bromance? I'm always sappy for a good bromance, so. I love being sappy yeah. for a good bromance. Yeah. Like, like, like wedding crashers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not a good bromance? No. <laughs> Come on, a meatloaf! Avengers number seven. How's that? Um, Doom pops up, like wearing the Iron Man armor, mm -hmm. and they all start like ready to fight him. He's like, "Hold on, hear me out." He's like, I'm just, I just want to do better. And he tells him like this big plot that's going down, and he's like, "Mostly, I need your help, Wasp, Nadia, because she's young." Yeah. There is something magical, like bad magical, going on at some summer camp, and he needs Nadia to infiltrate it. <laughs> some summer camp. Yes. So she like infiltrates the summer camp, and then they find out there's a person there like sacrificing bodies. Like, there's old demons dressed up as teenage girls. Oh, I thought it was, like, heavyweights. Sacrifice. It's not like heavyweights. No? It's not like bug juice. It's not like salute your shorts. <laughs> bug juice. Oh, fuck off. Bug juice doesn't come in a jar. Bug juice something who you are. Okay. Um, I, used to, I watched the shit out of bug juice when I was, you know how old? Like, 16. Because I always wanted to go to camp and never had the opportunity and like wanted that experience but and that's you really what, want to. That's, I did. That I really did. Awful. No, I really did. That never ever appealed to me. In any I always way. did. All right, let's be honest though. When it was the time of me to go to camp, I was already emotionally unavailable. <laughs> uh, probably physically unavailable because I was addicted to. Well, addicted is the wrong word. I was recreationally using drugs, so it probably would not have been the best location for me to go. But looking back, after I became sober uh, I, I did I, I kind of missed that and I feel like I'm, re I'm reaching back a lot for that kind of thing connection like you want to go to summer camp no no not as a full-grown adult I, don't get me wrong you're perspiring a lot it's fucking hot as shit in here <laughs> it's hot as shit in here I, uh, I I think being a, like a camp counselor or like working at a summer camp would be fun at this point and by fun I mean I'd probably be fucking furious for 10 hours a day <laughs> But it would be an experience. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. But they end up taking care of it, and then Doom is kind of slowly proving himself. I guess I don't know. Grapes, you got some books. You do. You, you got to tell these story. I'll hold these up. You just start talking about one, and I'll hold it up. Uh, okay. Um, you talk. I'll hold it up. <laughs> don't to, you don't have to yell at me. All right. Sorry. Sorry. We're used to Brian. Hot in here. Um, it's yeah. not that hot. It is a little warm. Uh, I'm a little toast. Yeah. So I am not on as much as these two are. Uh, this is my first two comic books that I think I've ever yeah, read. <laughs> yeah, I got these. Look how mangled that is, too. Um, I did take care of it. I tried to put it in my suitcase to Wisconsin, and yeah, yeah. And they, they obviously don't treat your luggage very well. That is uh, Grumpy Cat and Pokey, which I thought might have been, you know, it might have something to do with Jason based on. He's wearing a mask, and there's a pokey in it, but it's not. It's it's a uh, grumpy cat. <laughs> what do you get? What do you pokey, pokey have to do with, draw, with Jason? Well, like, like Jason, he has that sword. You know, so he's pokey people. Pokes people, and <laughs> <laughs> right. And look at the mask, though. So Jason named his machete Pokey. He's just fucking yeah. Acquaintance and everyone with Pokey. Like me, uh, Pokey. Well, think about whenever he lost his mind. He was at the age that he would call him machete a pokey thing. Whenever he got drowned, whatever. Whenever know. he got drowned. Yep. Yep. So that's where I thought that was going. It it did not. Um, Pokey is this high energy, very optimistic, uh, 
very happy about everything, sees the bright side, and Grumpy Cat is the exact opposite. Uh, they go and they, they find a, a tomb or something, and then they have to travel back in time, say a couple uh, magic words. Um, they find like this uh, Sphinx cat that it, it has been there for like a thousand years, and they have to bring the master back, and then they all purr together. It's kind of it's kind of different. Um, it was funny though. That Stay Puff Marshmallow Cat is amazing. Right? Oh my God. Yeah, that's he lost a bet, so he had to go do it. Um, I want to point out that this wasn't even a free comic book day book. This was just this was just a Halloween comic fest book that like was out there in case somebody wanted it. And this is you grabbed two books that day, and this was one you decided on. Oh, you did get five. You, you just didn't read the other ones. Well, you read the two most important, I believe. You read Grumpy Cat and Pokey, which I'm actually excited you took it because I feel like you that wasn't forced on you. Let's just make that sure. You, you had that you, one first. Yeah, you made that. The beautiful. next one may have been forced on you. Uh, I, I, nobody suggested that one, and I picked that one out myself. Yes. And then I asked for suggestions for the other four, and this was one that, that you suggested very much um, because you're a big Archie fan. So I... I didn't really, I didn't really uh, enjoy it too much. It was, it was them two. They broke up, and then their friends were trying to get them back together, and and then the the guy came in at the end, and that's literally Archie in a nutshell. Did the did the right thing to get them back together instead of making it awkward for them. I, I get that, but I thought it was. I was expecting more of a, a humor side to it. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot funnier, and I was just sad the whole time that Archie and, and Betty, right? I was sad that Barch. Barchi? Was it Barchi that they, they ended up calling him? Then that was the, the cool name. You can have this one. <laughs> I can't get it out. Let's acknowledge what you said to me downstairs. I wish I knew what happened in the lipstick incident. I do. I was let down that because I, I feel like that would be... Oh, I remember funny. this cocksucker. I, I feel like that would be oh, a funny story. So you're teaming up on me now. No, no, no. I remember it now. I remember the right? lipstick incident. Is, is it... I hope that it's com a little bit comical. No. Not at all. It's sad. Wait for your input. I don't remember it. I don't. Oh. I don't think it's a multi-way microphone. Yeah. Oh, am I behind it now? Yeah. yeah. I probably made it a lot worse. But yeah. I have the next issues for you to read. What was the lipstick incident? It was. Uh... Oh, we're gonna let him read. He probably doesn't want it. He doesn't like it. He didn't like Archie. It's not that. It, it, it was it. one issue. Right. It was one issue. And maybe he went into it with the wrong idea. Because I don't remember presenting it to you as if it was hilarious. Maybe that's just what you thought going in. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. Because um, there, there are some funny bits, but this might go back to the, that camp thing. And listen, listen, hear me out here. <laughs> oh, oh. Hear me out here. I, all of the stuff in here, which is like just, to a point, generic teenage high school stuff, I never had that. Like, I never, I never went through any of that. So maybe me reading this is me kind of living through that, and like this is where I'm getting it. Kind of like how I like, you know, I always watch Bug Juice, and I still would watch Bug Juice. Do I think this is still well written? 100%. I think it's very well written. I think it's a very well done comic, and I there are funny moments, but it's not fucking. It's not Grumpy Cat and Pokey. It's not laugh your ass off cover to cover. <laughs> There's some serious stuff involved, and maybe if, maybe if you go into the other ones with an idea that it's not going to be hilarious all the time. Jughead is funnier than this. So if I, if I get you to read Jughead, we'll give you a shot. So that, that was the next, I don't know if it, what they call it. Like, so like all of the, well, the two books, and I've noticed that like the books you've shown do this, where they like end, like here's the end, and then they have like a short, like little, I don't know, is that a... It's just, yeah, it's just a, you know, it's kind of just a secondary story. So they had a secondary Jughead story. That may have been a preview of Jughead in there. I'm not sure, though. I don't, because I don't recall that. That was a long time ago. <laughs> so I would say, yes, I would say it's well written. I just went into it with the wrong yes. uh, opinion, and then I was, I was waiting for, like, the really... The punchlines? You're waiting for the punchlines? By the way, the whole time you were talking about it, I had the microphone. So, <laughs> like, the whole time you were just explaining what you were waiting for, didn't realize it, was li listening to you, but I had the microphone. I was going to say something. Oh. I figured you... Well, yeah, I was just waiting for the, for the punchlines. I think that... If I read the next ones with the right mentality, I think I put that in backwards too. I'm not sure. Sure, well, okay. you do what you want. Yeah, you do you, you man. Do you want. Okay. I will not invalidate your opinions on how you want to put your books in. Yeah. So uh, the, there was one funny part where um, the dude's hands were stuck on the steering wheel. That was made me laugh because that wouldn't happen in real life. But that's awesome. Um, but I can see what you're saying. It was well written. It was, uh, you know, typical high school 
stuff going on, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty much that's, that's Archie. That that's what it is. I mean, you got the whole experience. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with I don't have an opinion on it yet. You should watch. You should watch Riverdale. But that's a bad way to explain. Because Archie is not Riverdale. This Archie is not Riverdale. But I think he'd enjoy Riverdale more than I think Archie. He would as well, but also just because it's a different medium. I think he'd be more of a visual medium. Oh, you don't just just stop and pause Riverdale and fill in the word bubble <laughs> yourself. Only when. You don't do that. I mean, only when the River Vixens are on. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, we've all been there, right? So I am very interested to learn out what what the learn about what the. List well, is. I have the first few issues, the singles, but I just also ordered the trades, so I will let you borrow the trades. You Don't know. get water damage on the trade. If you get water damage on the trade, you just gotta buy another one, like he did for me, and act like but, nothing but happened. But act like nothing happened. Tell me after the fact. That, oh, that's not yours, by the way. Bought you a new one. <laughs> Admit it exactly. I mean, it was a good story. It was a good story, though. It was on the podcast, I, you know. Mm. Did I talk? No, that was this week. That collection that I went to buy. Yeah, the, the how was that? collection I went to look at with work. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, the call came in. The guy said he had 1,000 comics. Uh, a little over 1,000 comics. I said, okay, what do you got? He said, mostly Bronze Age stuff, 35 cent books. Yeah. So I brush up on my Bronze Age keys. You know, I'm expecting to be go fucking treasure digging. Uh, we show up at this guy's house and knock on the door, and he limps to the door, um, <laughs> opens it up, and just opens his fucking ancient trunk. Like, like King Tut may have held his fucking badminton equipment in this thing. <laughs> he opens his trunk up, and there's just two rows of books. Like, neatly in there. Oh, that's surprising. Some bagged and boarded, some not. Um, I grab off this side. My boss grabs from the other side. I picked them up, and I just see, like, it wasn't so bad as, like, Young Bloods and Ninjax. Yeah. But one step above that. Oh. Like, it's just Jim Lee, X-Men in the, like, the, the, the 150s, you know what I mean? Like, late in that series. The the Jim Lee X-Men. Those, those are good. Not to, not when we're looking for fucking... No, the, the ones before they did the renumber that Jim Lee did, those go for a nice penny. Pretty sure, like like 189 and stuff. They were later than. They were later than. They like were, 207 maybe. They might have been later than that. What the look? What, what's the bloodline storyline? No. Oh. 270. Yeah. Might have been around because I know there's a bloodlines cover because I've seen it a thousand times. Um, some Spider-Man. Uh, nothing really really sticking out at me. There was one uh, New Teen Titans number two that I got excited about, uh, but it was the second volume. No. Uh, but, I mean, just a lot of, like, some amazings, but not any of the money amazings. And I'm just, like, looking at this, I'm like, oh, man. Like, trying to pull just things out that might be able to, like, cherry pick out of this thing. Found a couple things, like number two, three, and four of the Wolverine original four-issue mini. Oh, that's good. Um, a Lois Lane. There was a, an early Lois Lane in there. Um, the the G.I. Joe number two, which is the first appearance of... G.I. Joe. I, I, I can't remember his name. For I don't know. That's dollars. a poll. Snake Eyes? No. It's the, it was the first black guy in G.I. Joe. Oh. I can't remember his name. I want to say Dom, but that's not it. No. Uh, but there were, there were a few books. And then I'm, I'm pulling these things out and hitting. <laughs> my boss says, so what were you looking to get on these? And he looks up and he goes, here's the thing. I need 2800 bucks." <laughs> <laughs> And right at that moment, I'm thinking, we should just fucking leave. Like this, we're way too far apart for a fucking price. But I mean, you think he had a thousand books. He wanted like three bucks a book. I mean, that's Which if you sell them, part, you part them out, you know, maybe you could get yeah, that. But you got to put the work in, you know. You got to put, exactly. And uh, so we just continued to cherry pick. And then, you know, took a few out. And my boss brought a price guide. So we looked a few up to, you know, and he said he'd sell them for like, I don't know, 30% of, of price guide price. Yeah. So we moved a few up, and we got that to like uh, enough books there that it was, it was like 100 bucks or so. And then she's like, all right, 100 for these. And she's like, what about 150 for those down there? And he's like, uh, again, we had like, not the rest of them, but we had like four stacks. Yeah. And he's like, uh, I don't know, could you, could you do five? And, like, and he's, like, he, he's, like, he's like, you got a lot of number ones there. He's like, you got a lot of number ones, a lot of first oh, appearances. Oh, man. And I'm and I'm, I'm like I'm I'm riding that line of like being a dick because like I get the guy 
needs like he needs the money. Yeah, like, I don't want to be that. Yeah, part of it. and I also don't want to lose the sale that we could possibly have. So I'm like, yeah, but these are number ones that nobody cares about. <laughs> I was like, like this is a number one that it's only a number one. And people only care about it for the sake of it being a number one. It's not, it's not special in any way. He's like, yeah, but that's the first appearance of Man Wolf and Spider Woman. I was like, yeah, but it's not the first appearance of Man Wolf. It's the first appearance of Man Wolf in Spider Woman. Yeah, that's. that's not I was like, that's no, nobody really cares about that. And then, uh, by the way, and just to give you an idea where his mindset was, the whole time we were there, he would not stop talking about any movie. The casting was awful. This guy it must have been a fucking casting manager in Hollywood for 50 years because he kept saying, horrible casting. Horrible casting. He still thought that Punisher, he, yeah. has, he had no idea who John Bernthal was, has no idea about that. He thought Punisher was a guy from Punisher Warzone. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what a fun guy. I, I just tried to sell my yard sale today, actually. Uh, but we, he, he said 500. What? I'm going to buy it a dollar. Blu-ray? No. Do you have any Blu-rays for sale? Yeah. Harry Potter. I have them all. I figured. Um, okay. Uh, so he says 500. We goes, ah, no. So we look through a few more after he's complaining that we got number ones. Price a couple more out. Get that pile, like the pile of priced out books, to 150. Mm -hmm. Then we say, uh, all right, what about, you know, 100 for the rest there? And he goes, uh, no. He's like, Q350? He's like, no, no, can't. So then we're there more talking a little bit more, you know, just going through stuff. Uh, price a few more out that he thinks are worth something. We realize they're not. <laughs> like, he realizes that they're not. And then uh, another 20, 20 minutes to half hour, we're just there. And by the way, kittens and dust everywhere. And you know my allergies. Oh, God. That's the big two. That's the big two for me. Kittens and kittens and fucking dust everywhere. Just, just dust balls and kittens. And uh, we're doing it. We're pricing out some more. And she's like, all right. So we did. Uh, we said 150 for these. And he's like, yeah, and I'll give you the ones. On, uh, give me 100 bucks for those ones down there. And she's like, oh, so 250 like, oh, yeah. So the price we initially wanted to pay <laughs> an hour and a half ago. It's like, yeah, no problem. So then we put the ones we weren't buying back in the trunk. Get, we'll get what we're taking out there. The guy immediately starts selling me everything in his house. Oh, yeah? He's like, what's that copper tea kettle worth to you? What do you want? He's like, what else do you collect? I start telling him, like, you know, vinyl, you know, vintage camera equipment, you know, just all this fuck, everything I collect, you know. Everything. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing that stopped him in his tracks was oddities. I said, Audis. He goes, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know, old medical equipment, you know, specimens. And he goes, well, I don't got none of that. <laughs> but everything else, he seemed to have a little bit of. Like, he's like, well, I got vinyl. Let's go check it out. And I'm like, ah, oh, man. He's like, just come on. Come on. And by the way, I don't know if I talked about it on here. Uh, I have just bought over 500 vinyl. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Okay. But he goes, come here, come here, come here. Step over there. It's over there under that. I said, what? He goes, just go over there. So I had to step over a toilet in the middle of the room, nothing attached to it. Like, step over it. And he goes, yeah, it's right under there. I had to pull an old hamper full of hats and jeans that are the dustiest things I've ever seen in my life. It's this old hamper. I pick it up. I have to move it out of the way. And then it's just all Bob Seger, ZZ Top. Like, shit that I don't, I wouldn't mind having, but I'm also not trying to buy them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There was a hamper on top of them, for one. Two, I don't know how long they've been there. Three, I could find them somewhere else. Four, I feel like this guy's going to want, he just wanted $2,800 for these fucking, <laughs> for, the, for these comics. Um, and immediately after that, he goes, well, uh, you like baseball cards? I was like, no, no, I use them as bookmarks, actually. I don't care at all about them. He's like, coins. You like coins? No, I don't collect coins. Uh, uh, what about uh, uh, bayonets? You collect bayonets? I was like, no. That's always an oddity, right? <laughs> no. And then he's like, uh, he's like, oh, what else do you collect? What do you want? I was like, eh, I think we're good. I think, think we're really all right. You're trying, man. Uh, well... And I'll tell you off air because I don't want to like. I mean, I guess nobody knows who he is and the whole thing. But there's off air. There was a, a. I'll air something else. Yeah, when we're eating our food, it's probably gonna be cold. Oh, fuck off! I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. Then we'll do trivia and get the fuck out of here. How about that? No, are you done with your story? I guess I am now. You fucking shit on it. You iced me and then shit on it. I did. I did not. Yeah, that's probably what happened. So did you end up buying anything? Other than those $250 no. of comics? Oh, okay. I thought you were going with like... You didn't get that... that I bought this awesome... Tea kettle. Tea kettle. It was an ancient, like, copper tea kettle. Like, no... You could not make tea in it, and it may have been made out of pennies. <laughs> well, there you go. He's got coins and copper tea kettles. 1006. Are you playing this? You want to be the host? Oh, you can't read because your eyes are fucked up. You don't have any eyes. 
1006. Which name have the Great Lake Avengers not used? Oh, shit. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, me. Are you taking the question or am I taking the question? It. Oh, fuck. Which names have the Great Lakes Avengers not used? A, the Lightning Rods. B, the Great Lakes Champions. C, the Great Lakes X-Men. D, the Great Lakes Defenders. One of these things is not like the other. Yeah, I know, right? And that's usually the answer. So I'm going to go A, the Lightning Rods. Incorrect. Motherfuck, it's X-Men, isn't they it? They used the Lightning Rods. They used Lightning Rods, Great Lakes Champions, Great Lakes X-Men. They did not use Great Lakes Defenders. Ah, oh, fuck off. Gotta love them. 1007. Now. Who has not been one of the Crimson Dynamos? Yeah, fuck yourself. A, Professor Anton, Anton Vanko. B, Valentin Shalatov. C, Milos Marashik. D, Alex Nevin. Give me D. D, Alex Nevin. Yeah. You asshole. Incorrect. Her answer was C, My Milos Musarik. Milos Musarik. 1008. Who has not been a member of the Night Shift? What the fuck what is that? What are that? A, the Shroud. B, the Scarecrow. C, Tatterdemalion. D, Danson Macabre. <laughs> oh, C, because I don't even know what a Tatterdemalion is. <laughs> Incorrect, of course it is. The answer was B, the Scarecrow. Holy shit. Which of the Marvel's Western heroes did not appear? In the Avengers number 142 in 1975. Oh, God. A, Kid Colt. B, the Rawhide Kid. C, the Two-Gun Kid. D, the Ringo Kid. Give me Colt. You want Kid Colt? Yeah. A, Kid Colt. Incorrect. God damn it. D, the Ringo Kid. I wanted to say that. I just said Ringo Kid because I didn't know it existed. I didn't know it either. It's, but I felt like oh, that was too These are hard fucking questions. Why do the Celestials judge... In Earth's favor, in Thor number 300, 1980. A, because the Asgardians defeated them in combat. B, they accepted the Eternals as proof of humanity's potential. C, they accepted the Young Gods as proof of humanity's potential. B, because humanity had not destroyed itself in nuclear war. <laughs> uh, 1980, it sounds like D would be the answer if they were following in, like, actual history. Cold War? Yeah. Yeah. Um, B also seems possible. I don't think the Asgardians defeat them in combat. I don't think that's it at all. Uh, I'm going to go D. No, because would they care about the nuclear war? B. They, they accepted er Eternals as proof of humanity's potential. B. Fuck. It's got... Oh, it's C. They accepted the young gods as proof of humanity's potential. What the fuck are the young gods? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, oh, God. These, these are, are awful. awful. Which legendary figure did Iron Man meet in Iron Man number 150, 1980? A, King Arthur, B, Cleopatra, C, Thomas Edison, D, Leonardo da Vinci. I'm going to go Thomas Edison. C, Thomas Edison? Yeah. Incorrect. Oh, my God. Good answer was A, King Arthur. What's he doing at 150? <laughs> oh, man. Here we go, 1012. Which is not one of the nine worlds of Asgardian cosmology? A, Nornheim, B, Vanheim. C. Joltenheim. D. Alfheim. I mean, <laughs> it has oh. to be Nornheim. I'm, I'm I think all, I know. Vanheim and Joltenheim is definitely real. Alfheim, I believe, is real. But I'm just wondering about the Jason Aaron creation that happened recently. Yeah, I don't. So, A. Nornheim. That's Correct. What, that's what I would have went with. All right, I'm up one nothing. What is the home of the Giants in the Asgardian Nine Worlds? A. Musfelheim. B. Niflheim. C. Jotunheim. D. Alfheim. Niflheim. Isn't that where... What's his face? You know I can't help, right? You want to ask Grapes? No, it's... Here, ask Grapes. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you think, Grapes? Yeah. Uh, Niflheim. Niflheim. Yep. Niflheim. Niflheim. B? Whatever Niflheim is, A. There's no, that's not one of the answers. N Niflheim. Niflheim? What? Yeah. Correct answer is C, Jotunheim. That's where Loki came from, Ice Giants. Oh, I was trying to think where, what's his face? I can't think of his name. 1014, here we go. You're not helping. What is the home of the Dark Elves in the Asgardian Nine Worlds? That's what I was looking for. A, Niflheim. B, Muspelheim. C, Alfheim. D, Svartalheim. Uh, I think Muspelheim 
Mm. That's where I'm from, brother. Alfheim is the light elves. Svartalheim might be the trolls? Trolls? You say trolls weird. Say it trolls? again. Trolls? That's weird. Muscleheim, I feel like, would be... Trolls? The, the, like, where hell run, where hell is. Trolls? Where hella is. I'm gonna go Niflheim, like you did last time. Niflheim. Fuck! God damn Svartalheim. <laughs> Svartalheim. God damn Svartalheim. All right, what is the realm of Surtur and his fire demons? <laughs> A, Nidavellir. Awful. B, Muscleheim. This is so bad. Muspelheim. Muspelheim. C, Svartalheim or D, Vanheim. I don't know, champ. B. B, Muscleheim. Yeah. It's 1-1. One, one. Oh, you knew that? I did know that one. Because <laughs> fire, demons, that's why I thought about hell. Muscleheim. That's the, that's the fire one. Okay. It's 1-1, one, 10-16. One, Who was not one of Tony Stark's employees? A, <laughs> Yvette Avril. B, Dr. Jose Santini. C. Felix Alvarez. D. Doctor Erica Sondheim. Erica Sondheim. Um, I'm gonna go Eric. No, it has to be Erica Sondheim. Uh, Yvette Avril. A. Fuck. Wow, we're dumb. B. Doctor Jose Santini. That's who I wanted to go to. Here we go. Which Marvel Western hero traveled from the 19th century to the Avengers' own time? A. Kid Colt. B. The Rawhide Kid. C. The Two Gun Kid. D. The Phantom Rider. Give me A. You want A. Kid Colt? You love Kid Colt. Man. <laughs> yeah. A. Kid Colt. Incorrect. Fuck, let me down, Kid Colt. The answer is C, the Two Gun Kid. It's still one Fuck one. Fuck Two Gun Kid. He fucked me still twice. Still one one. This is awful. I think I have this next one. Ten eighteen. Here we go. Which villain appeared in the original West Coast Avengers miniseries? A. Graviton. B. Ultron. C. The Grim Reaper. D. Cornelius Van Lunt. Graviton played a huge role in the entire West Coast series after the mini. So I gotta go Graviton. A. Nice. Correct. I knew you'd get that. 2-1. It's one of the first uh, series I ever completed. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Ten, nine, by the way, that guy, when he, he said he... The guy with the collection, after he was saying, those are all first appearances and stuff, he said, yeah, I already sold my Amazing 129. And, oh. and I'm thinking, uh, did you, though? <laughs> did you? Did you? 10-19. Um, Here we go. Uh, what am I up? 2-1. Which villain from Marvel's Western Comics turned up in West Coast Avengers number 18, 1987? A, Doctor Danger and Hurricane. B, The Rattler, Red Raven and the Living Totem. C, Iron Mask and the Fat Man. God damn it. D, all answers are correct. Give me D. Can't go wrong. Fucking bullshit. Two, two. It's always all. It's always all. It's 2-2. Two, 10-20, two. I need this. What weapon did Malekith unleash on Earth? A, the evil eye. B, the casket of ancient winters. Oh. C, the living talisman. D, the Norn stones. It has to be the Norn stones. Casket of ancient winters sounds badass. badass. That's our new band name, right? Yeah. Casket of ancient winters. I'm in. Call ourselves Ka. C-A-W. Well, we're in. That's it. That's it. We just confirmed. The Norn stones, D. Fuck. Casket of yes. ancient winter. Why would you not go with that? It's I think I think Nornstones may have kidney been stones. Recent. I think he did that recently. Gallstones. Uh, how did the Red Skull survive dying of old age for the win? By the way, in Captain America number three hundred, a the Cosmic Cube restored him to life. B the Super Soldier Serum restored his health. C Arnim Zola transferred his mind into a clone of Captain America. D he switched bodies with one of his underlings. Give me Arnim Zola one. C. Arnim Zola transferred his mind into a clone of Captain America. Yeah. That sounds, sounds For the like win. That sounds, yeah. Champion! Glorious! All right, good game. Next up, 1022. Who is Jormagand? Jormungand. Tune in next week. J O R M U Jormungand. 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 A casket of ancient winters. Jormungand. Jormungand and his casket of ancient winters. Nice. I'm in. How'd you like that? You guys I didn't bring a pen up. I can't mark this. The fuck you mean? You can't. You just had a pen. Never had a pen. No. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll remind you. You'll have one. Just we'll add another one because you'll be at ten then. All right. So we're done. 
Yes. You got anything before we part? I know you're fucking hungry, but you got anything before we part? Uh, Don't sacrifice fucking pod for whatever the shit you got going on. I just want to fucking eat. I'm sure Grapes is hungry. You hungry? You got anything dead? It's, uh, it's not worth ruining the pod. Yes. Oh! -ho! Yes. Comment. Hey, we, we voted you out, by the way. You're out. You're done. Well, he can still talk, I guess. I mean, that's the whole point of it. I, we need them to comment if they knew what cheese turds were before my explanation of cheese turds. Please I comment. I need to know if that's if I'm an idiot or if you do just no random stuff and make me feel like. Me. <laughs> so I think that the, the latter is true. Can I can I preface this that grapes didn't know what POTUS stood for when we were playing trivia night. Rude, rude, you brought that up. Hello, blow. That's a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we bring you on your knees with that low blow. I'm sorry. I apologize for Don't that. Don't you stick up for him. He just tried to kick me off my own show. No, that was a group effort. <laughs> well, I'm used to you trying to kick me off, but it's never two against one. <laughs> what if you turned around and we just had... <laughs> we just had Graves' face on every one of the fucking things? Like, look who runs this shit. Graves' face is on all the heroes behind us. That'd be amazing. <laughs> it, was a, it was an elaborate ruse. It's been a whole conspiracy the whole time. <laughs> yes. God damn it. You look on the screen and your face is covered up by like a, pa a paint <laughs> sticker of him. But no, please let us know if you know what cheese curds are. P prior to Grapes' in-depth explanation. Scientific. So we're done? You need a plug? Um, oh, I, did, you, did you play Injustice 2 yet? Did you, did you get, get it from Gamefly? No. Oh, you going to? Probably not. Oh. I'd like to play the storyline, but I'll just wait till you're done with it and then I'll borrow yours. Oh. Is that a dick move? <laughs> is it a dick move, though? No. I don't want to play you because you're way better at fighting games than me. And, like, the only reason I was fun for a while when we both got the first one was because I just spammed the fuck out of you with Deathstroke. Well, I, I guess. I can't. I can't. It's no fun always I've, losing. I've never been a fighting game guy anyway. Yeah, that's my thing. But, no, the story's good, though. I beat the Is story. it longer than the first? Yes. And it has an alternate ending. Okay. So, and there might even be something extra after. I didn't do the alternate side yet, but... Yeah. Well, whenever, well, like, I mean, I got, I know I'll try a, couple, a month or so, at least until you get bored of it, so. Yeah. But whenever that happens, I'll borrow yours. Pick it up. I'm not going to pick it up. Well, not you. I'm not. <laughs> I just set my Gamefly games back, and I'm, it's, the last time I got Gamefly, this tells you how long it's been since I've, I've had these games, because I've had Final Fantasy 15. Like three years, right? Since February. 18's out, right? <laughs> it should be. Uh, and I looked on my, like, my list where you put, like, in order what you want next, and I always put ones that are like about to be, like going to be released in the future, or ones that are of low. So they always give me ones in the top because they always try to give you ones in your top. Yeah, they're all available now. That's how long ago it's been since I fucking Jeez, even adjusted guy. with that. I'm trying to get the new WWE game. I haven't played it yet, hmm. so that's what I'm working on. I didn't even know that was out. If I get it, maybe. Oh, well, yeah, the, the the next new one should be out soon. <laughs> but whenever I get that, I'll bring it here, and we'll, we might do a one of your things on it. On sounds good. On not so tryhards <laughs> gaming, check us out on YouTube. At Breakdown Brand on Twitter, Breakdown Brand on YouTube, Stickosaurus on Twitter, Stickinator on YouTube, Earbones Comics, Earbones Podcast on Twitter. You can find us. And then Grapes. In real life. It, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you want to say something to Grapes and IRL, let us know. We'll, <laughs> we'll get it to them. Okay, so we done? Yeah. Anything else? You got anything left? No. Yeah. Anything else? All right, well, uh,. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of the cheese curd himself, Grapes, <laughs> on behalf of the eternal weed stick, <laughs> I am the ears brand asking you, inviting you, telling you to next time you're about to sit down to some poutine, ask yourself, what would Rick Jones do?